Welcome to Unfold Data Science friends. My name is Aman and I am a data scientist. In this video, I am going to explain about hierarchical clustering. What are different types of hierarchical clustering? How it works? What is the fundamental behind it? And why it is important in machine learning and data science? Let's start guys. So if you see the sklearn clusters home page guys, you will see that there is a large table explaining different different clustering methods. Okay. Here in my playlist, I am not covering all the methods, rather I am covering only the methods which are used frequently in the industry and which is a common interview question. If you say clustering, you know, then these are the topics which might come. Okay. So let's know today about hierarchical clustering. First of all, guys, this word comes from hierarchy. So what is hierarchy, guys? Very simple to understand, right? So hierarchy means something which is kind of a branch okay so for example aman is working here aman reports to his boss and there is one more person who also reports to aman's boss and aman's boss reports to one person and then this becomes a hierarchy right so this is a hierarchy hierarchy means there are many nodes in that so on the same fundamental on the same principle this clustering algorithm works okay so there are basically two types of hierarchical clustering one is known as agglomerative and second one is known as divisive. I will show you with the simple data how these two clustering algorithm work. Okay. First of all, let's understand how agglomerative clustering works. So guys, in this data, I have drawn a data here. In this data, we have how many points? Five points. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, five points. These five points, suppose we have to cluster. Okay. So how agglomerative clustering will work is in step zero, it will assume that all these data points are one, one individual cluster. Okay. So let me write it here. Data point number one, data point number two, data point number three, data point number four and data point number five. How many clusters we have in step zero? Five clusters equal to number of data points. Now what it will do is it will try to reduce the number of clusters. So it will see out of all these clusters, can I merge two clusters? Okay. Now suppose it sees in the data by the distance, I will go to the mathematical details later by the distance one and two are closer. So it will merge one and two, one and two, it will merge like this. Now, how many clusters we have guys? One, two, three, and these two become one cluster. Okay. So four clusters. We started with five. Now we are at four. It will again see in the next iteration. Can I merge three and four together? If yes, it will merge three and four. Okay. Then how many clusters we have? One cluster, two cluster and three cluster. Next iteration, it will see. Can I merge either of these clusters further together? So it might see that five is also near to three and four. So let us merge five, three and four in one cluster. Now, how many clusters we have? One cluster here, one cluster here. We started with five. Now we have two clusters and maybe possibly it might say that, hey, you know what? Based on certain parameters that we give in SQL and when we call this method, it might also merge all these points in one large cluster. Okay. So if you note here, what we are doing is initially we started with more number of clusters and we kept reducing number of clusters level by level. This method is called agglomerative clustering in hierarchical clustering. So here hierarchy is there. Okay. This is for example, level zero, this may be level one, this may be level two, right? This is a hierarchy. Another thing to note here is it is a bottom up approach right which means we started from here and then we moved up next thing to note here is in this clustering this diagram that you see here is known as dendrogram okay dendrogram if somebody asks you tomorrow what is a dendrogram dendrogram is nothing but this diagram that you see here representing different levels in the hierarchy of cluster that is about agglomerative clustering. How divisive clustering works? Little different. 
just reverse of what we did here. So in agglomerative, algorithm assumes that all the individual point are 1 1 clusters. Here in divisive clustering, algorithm assumes that all the points are part of one single big cluster. Okay, so how it will start guys? It will start like this, all the points inside, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all points inside, one cluster, step 1. In step 2, it will see, can I separate some clusters? Okay, so it might separate. So maybe 1 and 2 will come this side, okay, and maybe 3, 4 and 5 goes this side, 3, 4 and 5. Then it will see, can I split it further? So it might do like this, 3 and 4 here and 5 becomes a separate cluster. Just an example I am giving. Divisive means it is dividing. One big thing, it is cutting, it is dividing in sub-clusters. So what kind of approach is this guys? It is a top-down approach, right? Bottom-up, top-down. Divisive and this one is agglomerative. Okay? Just to let you know, in industry, this kind of clustering we use more and this divisive kind of clustering, we generally use little less. There is a reason for that guys. If you see, what is the assumption, what is the underlying assumption between these two? In divisive clustering, the underlying assumption is all the data points behave similar. That is why a big cluster in the beginning, okay? Which is relatively less real. If you, if you think about that, right? For example, there are 1 million customers of Flipkart. Do you think all the customers, that assumption that all the customers are one, is that assumption a good assumption? Practically, I feel no. Here, what we are assuming, we are assuming that all the customers are different and now we try to merge it, okay? And that is where this becomes more popular from industry point of view. Next thing is, this approach so this is little less used in the industry. That's what I was coming here to say. And this agglomerative clustering we use, okay? There are some disadvantages with this clustering. And the first disadvantage is time and space complexity. So all these things, there must be some mathematics going on internally, right? In that mathematics, many times the calculation need to happen. So every time it is calculating, every time it is asking the question, can I merge one and two together? There is some mathematical calculation going inside. Can I merge 3 and 4 together? Why 3 and 4 should be merged with 5? Why not with 1 and 2? There is some mathematical calculation going on. I will come to that, okay? So this is a space complex and time complex. More time and more space or more resources it might take, okay? Next thing to understand here is, what are the important parameters when you call this method in Python? There are some important parameters that you need to pass. The most important parameter is known as linkage, okay? Linkage. What is linkage is linkage tells you how do you get the answer of those questions. Those questions means shall I merge 1 and 2 together or shall I merge 3 and 4 together? Why shall I merge 3, 4 and 5? Why not 3, 4 and 1 and 2 in next iteration? So the answer to that is there are mathematical calculations going on inside using this linkage function. There can be different types of linkage, different types of calculations, okay? So, some of the famous calculations are average, okay? This is called single. But in SQL and default, if you do not give any argument, what is used in SQL and default is known as WARD, WARD method, okay? What this WARD method does is, it will see that when I am merging two clusters together, what is the cost of merging? Now understand this carefully guys. If I give you four data points, if I give you four data points, let's say data point one, data point two, data point three, data point four, okay? Now what is the variance of all these data points individually? It will be zero, right? So variance of one individually. 1 minus mean of 1, 0. 2 minus mean of 2, 0. Right? But if I tell you that 1 and 2 is one group and 3 and 4 is one group, now tell me what is the variance of this total four numbers. Okay? 
this is one group and this is one group now this group will have some variance right one two this group will also have some variance one two uh, sorry three four and the same funda goes here in the ward method in the cost calculation so what cluster sees is what algorithm sees is when i'm merging two clusters what is the cost i'm paying okay for example there must be a variance of one to this cluster correct and there must be a variance of three four five this cluster correct okay separately cluster one for example if i call it cluster one if i call it cluster two then cluster two will have its own variance cluster one will have its own variance when the merging happens this bigger merging here and this becomes cluster three now cluster three will have its own variance right so the cost is defined as what is the gain in the variance which means you can write here variance of c3 minus variance of c1 minus variance of c2 this is your cost okay this is your cost of merging and your clusters will be merged in such a way that this cost is minimized okay i'm just going to tell it one more time very simply here when we create bigger groups when we merge cluster then how much variance is shooting up that is what we are calculating using this cost so this is my new variance this was my old variance and this was my old variance so this difference gives us the gain in the variance heretical clustering or agglomerative clustering will always try to keep this cost as low as possible and that is how this entire clustering algorithm works next question comes we do not want to have always one cluster or two cluster or three cluster same question guys where shall we stop right for example here for demonstration i showed you one cluster but it, it it may not be a good answer to the business problem right business might have you know uh, four clusters might be good answer to business problem so how do we know where to stop which parameter shall we pass those things i'm going to show you in my next video where i implement this using python i will show you linkage function use and i will show you what are the other important parameters that you pass here so that you get the better clusters okay remember one thing heretical clustering is space and time complexity is high hence if your data size is huge this might not be a recommended algorithm but people might, might ask you questions around this in interview i am going to cover the interview questions as well okay so let me know what doubts you have guys i'll see you all in the next video guys till then wherever you are stay safe and take care